This next problem is about a ping pong ball drop. I spent way too much of my youth doing this instead of, you know, talking to other people. In this problem, the ball is going to fall about half a meter and bounce off the paddle, something like that. And we're claiming that the ball will rebound at about 80% of the speed at which it hit the paddle. And the question is simply plot position, velocity, acceleration, calculate the rebound velocity, and figure out how high it'll bounce. So, always start with a plot. Let's see, the position of a drop, it's going to drop from 0.5 meters, right there, and you know that it's going to start from rest, so the slope should start out flat, but then it's going to fall under gravity, so the slope will get more and more negative. So it'll have the familiar parabola shape. On the rebound, we said that the sp it's 80% of the impact speed. So the speed is the magnitude of the velocity, so it's the slope of that line. And we're saying it's going to come back up with a little less speed. So we'll have it bounce at a lower uh, magnitude of the slope, kind of like that. And that would also lead us to think it's not going to bounce as high. So that's the position. Now before we do velocity, let me draw a little dotted line, since that's where the important part happens, right there. For velocity, we know it starts at zero, we dropped it from rest, and it gets more and more negative because it's falling under gravity. So really it's a straight line, and nothing happens until that point when the ball hits the paddle. And then, suddenly, the velocity changes direction. It goes from down to up. So the velocity goes from negative to positive. So it's actually, if we plot it like this, it looks like an instantaneous change. It's okay to make it do this. It suddenly goes up very much, very hard like that. It doesn't go up quite as high as it was down because 80%, right? So I won't draw it going quite as high. So that happens almost instantaneously, and then it continues to decelerate. Even though it's flying up, gravity's slowing it down. So the um, velocity time plot continues to come down like that at the same slope that it was doing there. Finally, there's the acceleration. We know that while it's following, it's accelerating due to gravity, so it's negative 9.8. And the only interesting part is when it hits the paddle, the paddle pushes it up and accelerates it up just for an instant to get it up to a positive velocity. But then, as soon as the ball leaves, it's back down to negative 9.8. So, slightly unusual looking plots, but that's what you should get for the plots. Okay, B, what is the rebound velocity? Let's see, the rebound velocity... So, let's start labeling some things here. Let's call this special time T star, and let's call this kind of the pre-bounce region. Let's call this the post-bounce region. So we want to know the velocity after the bounce. We know it's the speed is 80% before the bounce, so really we need the speed right, right there. We need to know how far down does it get? That's the first thing we need to calculate. So we drop something from rest, it dropped 0.5 meters, and we need to know how fast is it going when it gets down by 0.5 meters. So we're going to do this with the two basic kinematic equations. There's this other one we'll get to later, but let's start with the basic ones. We need to know the, the, the main equations we have. We have x final equals x initial plus v initial t plus 1 half a t squared. And then we also have that uh, v final equals v initial plus at. So what we know is the change in x, right? We know it dropped from 0.5 to 0. And we can use this one to figure out the time. How long did it take? And then we can use the time we got here to figure out how fast it was going. So let's do that real quick. So final is going to be 0. It's dropping to the surface at 0. The initial is going to be 0.5 meters. There was no initial velocity, we dropped from rest, plus 1 half, and that's negative 9.8, oops, 9.8, and that's t squared. Okay. So actually 0 .5, 0 0.5, those kind of go away. This is negative, so a 1 would come over here. The answer is basically 1 over 9.8 and take the square root. So mathematically is what you have to do. So you get the t, and that's t star, that's the time it takes to get right there, is equal to 0 0.319 seconds if you work out the numbers. All right, so then we take that T star and we put it in here. And we get that V final is V initial, which is zero, plus acceleration, which is negative 
times 0.319 seconds, like that, and we get the number comes out to be negative 3.13 meters per second. And then you look where we asked for the velocity. Yes, so we better make it a vector. V, uh, final vector hat, negative 3.13, and I'll just say I hat to make it uh, for the x-axis unit vector. So negative, of course, it's going down. Oh, but we were asked not for the that, we were asked for the rebound velocity. So for the rebound velocity, that would be V, I'll call it RB, and it's equal to that minus 3.13 times 80% times 0.8, and one more number times negative 1. The negative 1 will change the sign because it's a rebound, so it goes from negative to positive slope. So when you put those together, then you get what we're looking for, 2.5 meters per second. And that's in the i-hat direction. So there's the rebound velocity. So that is part B. And then finally, C, how high does it get? I'll cram it in right here. Well, let's see. For that part, we are looking here. We have a ball that takes off from the surface at 2.5 meters per second, and it slows down uh, due to gravity at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So what are we going to do? Well, let's see. First, we've got to get the time here and then plug it in here. We're going to do the opposite of what we did last time. We can get the time because we know final initial velocity. We know the acceleration. Right? So the final velocity is going to be zero. The initial velocity is 2.5 meters per second minus 9.8 times t negative, uh, plus at. There's acceleration is minus 9.8 t. Turn that around. And you get t, in this case, we're talking about, um, we're going to the point where it's flat here, so we'll just call it t, is uh, you turn those numbers around, and what do you get? Um, 0.255 seconds. Okay. And then it's simply a question of how high did it get in that amount of time. Same equations, x final equals x initial was 0, plus, um, let's see, plus v initial t plus 2.5 times 0.255 plus 1 half a and then 0.255 squared. So you calculate these two terms, add them together, and you get the final height is 0.32 meters. is the answer to part C. And a quick way to check, it should probably be lower than the initial 0.5 meters. And it is. Right? So it started at 0.5, only bounced to about 0.32. And that's the problem. Now you may have expected one more question. We could make up a quick part D. A common question in these problems that are impulsive is, what was really happening during the hit? Right? It's accelerating. So you could ask, what is the average acceleration? The real acceleration happening here is very complicated as the two bodies you know, bang into each other and deform. But you could relatively easily get d, acceleration average, if you're told the contact time. So in problems where two things collide, a lot of times you'll be told something about the contact time. And what they're doing is having you calculate an average without knowing the details. And that's what this would be. If you wanted the average acceleration, and let's say it told you the contact time was 20 milliseconds, then you'd say uh, 0.02 delta t down here, and we need delta v up here, and that would be final 2.5 minus initial um, negative 3.13, and you put all those numbers together, and you get the acceleration. I got 282 meters per second squared. Very large because it's accelerating it for a very short time. You get big accelerations when two things hit each other. So this kind of a problem would also often ask that question.